Hi, this is Dr. Luis de la Torre. I am an Associated Professor of Surgery in Pediatrics at the University of Colorado and Assistant Director of the International Center for Colorectal and Urogenital Care at Children's Hospital Colorado in Denver. I'm here today to discuss the problematic obstructive symptoms after a technically well-performed pull-through for Hirschsprung disease. Hirschsprung is a congenital problem affecting one in 5,000 newborns, so it belongs to the group of rare disease. The lack of ganglion cells in the rectum characterize this disease. The absence of ganglion cells produces intestinal obstruction because the aganglionic bowel is spastic and does not relax. The rectum is aganglionic in 100% of the newborns with Hirschsprung. The resection of all the bowel without ganglion cells is the principle of surgical treatment. Since I already mentioned that Hirschsprung always affects the rectum, its resection is necessary with a pull-through in all cases. The goal of the pull-through is to create a new rectum using a vowel with ganglion cells. During the pull-through, a critical portion is performing the colorectal anastomosis near the anal canal. The anal canal is the most sensitive area in humans. We must preserve this segment. Why do we need to keep the anal canal? Well, we must remember that the rectum's function is storing feces, which is the main reservoir for poop. So, because patients with Hirschsprung will lose this function, the anal canal is of great importance for these patients to have bowel control. Unfortunately, damage in the anal canal during the pull-through results in fecal incontinence. However, the bad news about preserving the anal canal is that this segment is also affected in patients with Hirschsprung and is one of the leading causes of obstruction after a technically well-performed pull-through affecting up to 50% of the patients. The anal canal is a short segment of one to two centimeters that does not relax, creating an area of high pressure at the end of the rectum. This condition should be informed to the parents to stay alert in case of obstructive problems. What problems do these patients have after a pull-through? Mainly there are two, enterocolitis and constipation. Hirschsprung associated enterocolitis could be a life-threatening condition and occur anytime after the pull-through. This disease is characterized by less or no bowel movements, abdominal distension, vomiting, and full-smelling diarrhea in some patients. Unfortunately, it is easy to confuse this problem with gastroenteritis. The abdominal x-ray, in most cases, shows a dilated bowel for the pull-through. The treatment is performing rectal irrigation as soon as possible and giving metronidazole. Rectal irrigations are a life-saving procedure. Surgeons and nurses must teach and practice this procedure with the parents before the pull-through. Rectal irrigations are performed every eight hours for one week, then every 12 hours for another week, and every 24 hours for two more weeks. The patient receiving metronidazole for 10 days. Some patients do not tolerate winning the frequency of irrigations. In these situations, we keep the irrigations every eight or 12 hours. Patients with recurrent bouts of colitis must have a new workup to be sure that there are no mechanical causes requiring a redo pull through. The workup involves a contrast enema and an erectile exam under anesthesia and a full thickness biopsy of the neorectum. The contrast enema rules out torsion or stenosis of the pull through. Also, it is helpful to observe a transition zone in cases with residual aganglionosis 
due to an incomplete resection and to evaluate the severity of the colon dilation. The anorectal exam on the anesthesia allows evaluation of the integrity of the anal canal and the anastomosis line. We need to confirm a pattern that is elastic and free of structures anastomosis. The biopsy of the neorectum evaluates the presence of ganglion cells. A redupul true is indicated in patients with obstructive symptoms due to torsion or stenosis of the colon, a stenotic anastomosis, or an aganglionic pull through. When no mechanical or histological causes of obstruction require a redupul pull through, the patient will continue with irrigations. Most of these patients benefit from Botox injection into the anal canal. As we already explained, the anal canal is spastic in these patients. Botox or botulin toxin produces temporary chemodenervation of this area. Consequently, the anal canal will remain relaxed, allowing the patient to pass spontaneously gas and feces. When the patient responds well to Botox, we can transition the irrigations to enema or oral stimulant laxative. The second obstructive problem after the pull-through is constipation. A slow or hypomotility of the colon with ganglion cells is the principal problem. Currently, we don't know what causes this motility problem. What we know for sure is that this patient with long-standing constipation or untreated chronic dilation of the bowel, these patients have the worst motility problem. That is why it is crucial to prevent bowel dilation at all costs. These patients usually have an excellent outcome to daily enemas or stimulant laxatives, such as Sena. It is essential to say that polyethylene glycol is not indicated in these patients. Thank you for watching this video. This has been Dr. De La Torre at Children's Hospital Colorado. For more information, give us a call or visit the link on the screen.